so the engineering steering committee is a body of the document foundation i guess it's kind of the least formalized ones um so we meet uh, normally um once a week on something like on thursdays and we try to coordinate um so we are we are not really tasking people sometimes we discuss something and then multiple people have good ideas and then we ask um who takes the actual action so that what we discussed uh, happens but uh, it's it's primarily a coordinating um uh, meeting and in case there is nothing to coordinate because everything is on track then we finish sooner uh, sometimes there are you know some rare cases there are multiple complex topics to discuss and then we we put we discuss one one topic and then we put the other one to next week um but it's meant to be uh, meant to ensure that um, different entities volunteers people uh, tdf staff uh, people from companies um, try to create something which is a little bit more consistent compared to when we don't talk to each other. Um, it's also when um, we discuss the releases. Sometimes it makes sense to. There is some flexibility with the release schedule. Um, each release is defined as it will happen on a certain week, so you have a bit of flexibility between Monday and and uh, Sunday. And um, usually, Cloth does the. We will, I'm sure he will appear here sooner or later. Um, <clears throat> so he does the, the tagging uh, of uh, release, uh, the, the matching git tag, and it makes sense to coordinate and make sure that um, that happens when we have a state which is actually useful and, um, and makes sense to release and see. Um, and I personally don't do much during those meetings. I just try to lead those. Uh, we have a few fixed sections, and also there is an agenda that um, people can edit. And in case there is something um, that um, looks like a, a topic that needs um, the ESC attention, then those can be added. added. In case um, somebody is preparing a change which uh, feels like it might be controversial, then it's good to have input from other people in the ESC. Uh, you can be much more confident that you won't unintentionally upset people in case you got input from the ESC and it, it sounds like that would be working. Um, yeah, perhaps that that is fine as an intro. Um, normally we have an agenda and then we go through the various aspects of the project like uh, documentation and UX and QA update and uh, accessibility and um, um, RTI status and um, hopefully I did not really miss anybody um, and uh, sorry type of access yeah yeah so that's that's one of the the things which just happen and it, it works well and it needs no discussion so they it's uh, like the ESC is not um, um, a large body of people who, who want to be very important by long meetings it's more like we discuss what's what's ongoing is there anything that um, that sounds like a conflict that should be resolved or anything that needs attention? We also have a bots cooking uh, section. I uh, stole that from the Git project. Uh, they send out regularly a list of things that are currently happening and it might be less obvious from the Git logs, but otherwise it's interesting. So uh, there is a section there where just as a bullet point, you can mention something that's nice that happened in the past week or something cool and it uh, it is uh, good to have uh, extra testing for that or something like this. Um, so typically during the conference, we don't do the regular agenda. <coughs> it's... Um, more like uh, in case there is anybody who is usually not attending those calls, but they would have questions to the ESC, then feel free to ask those, and we will try to answer as, as best as we can. Um, in worst case, in case there would be really no questions, then of course we could um, go like um, around and just give a quick update on what's currently ongoing, but that would be rather the plan B. So, of course, asking the first question is the most difficult one. So, in parallel, Harper and Andrea can uh, think of a good first question, because once we are past the first one, the second one is, is easier, and the third one is trivial. Uh, I really don't know about uh, 
Ask is uh, uh, how is made by what by everyone is committer is uh, how, how does it work and uh, what you decide can be imposed to all the other developers or something like this or that's not the intent of the ask you want to answer that well, you can do fine <laughs> sure if you want um, you can do Okay, never push the button. Okay, um, so question was how is the ESC, how did it come about and uh, do we have any power um, to answer the second question? No, we don't. We um, <laughs> just um, a, a group of friendly guys who, uh, yeah, we're mostly guys, some girls have been on the ESC, but um, it's mostly grumpy old men who sit together and uh, in a friendly way, hash over any issues that come up and then always try to find consensus and I think always do find consensus um, and just um, in, in a way of giving out recommendations. So we don't say you can't do that or um, now we decided this, go do that please uh, or even command people to do anything but just um, have our... Um, our ideas or our um, we all have uh, the, the the common experience of all these people is so big that we always have some expert on some area uh, on some area um, who can give um, some um, comment on something in a way that is uh, at least sounds authoritative um, and then people are happy with that and and go from there and it, it's rare that uh, anybody would come up with something ask pose a question can I can I implement it this way and then uh, people say oh, that's not a good idea and those people will do it anyway I, I think that never actually happens uh, because it's it's also uh, of value what these other people who know this code uh, tell you about that so nobody has the better nobody gets the bad idea that they do it anyway uh, the way they want it but um, we couldn't prevent anybody from from doing it the way they want and in, in the worst case it would end up in the code and uh, and then uh, three months later somebody says that's such a crappy thing I, I i'm gonna revert that or rewrite that completely anyway because it's all free so you you can't uh, prevent anybody uh, in reality from 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 modifying it in a, in a way um, that you are not happy with uh, but the uh, what it um, usually boils down to is that um, it converges on something that all more or less can agree on and uh, it keeps working so that's how we how we operate and how we came about is i think um from the origins of LibreOffice. uh yeah the ones who were who happened to be there at that time uh and were the developers of uh previous uh star office open office whatever um endeavors uh, then continue to to sit on this uh, initial ESC and then over time people came and went and when we see that somebody does a lot of good work um, then they kind of maybe mature into the ESC and, and some people are still on the ESC but never show up and they uh, at, at some point we might clean that up and they fall out of that again but it's not um, and of course it's it's never that um, there is the ESC people but it's just whoever happens to show up at one of our uh, weekly meetings uh, is there and, and has their voice and has their input. So we, we don't do any formal raise your hand or any votes or anything on anything. So it's not um, a homogeneous group of, of these. Uh, this is the ESC, but it's more of a, 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 a fluctual thing. People tend to care about LibreOffice for some time in their life and then they end up joining the ESC and, and sitting there and having their input and then they go on with their own lives and do something completely different and drop out again. That of course happens as well. And then there's some old timers who tend to <laughs> stick around. <laughs> Just as a minority thing, um, in addition to what Stefan said, um, one thing where we it's again not really a vote, but when somebody does a lot of good things, 
and um, by default you don't get comment access and at some point um, what is submitted uh, to get it for review is is so close to um, um, quality which would be already getting the code review plus two that basically we just slow down that person and we should get commit access to that people and that person and that person could actually help out with code review for others and so on so that typically gets uh, uh, around past the ESC so there is a section to nominate people but there is always a sponsor and then we ask if in case um, anybody has suggestions uh, or like objections um, but um, again in most cases um, in case you are nominated then typically that's, that gets approved so people know when, when um, it makes sense to nominate somebody the other case is that currently this whole tendering process is on hold but it did happen in the past that uh, that it was not really a vote it's, it was more like a ranking of like uh, how do you see the priority of these 10 things and that has an actual uh, impact on like somebody starts to take that ranking to the board and the board is typically not overriding that but um, taking what was the input from the ESC uh, but uh, as Stefan said we don't really like deciding things by voting um, usually on technical things um, you can have enough discussion that there is a consensus and then it's always much easier normal that on a, such a big project and all the complexity uh, I guess probably you, ha you have in a good way uh, push from uh, stress from the community or uh, the big boss or uh, so on uh, to do or implement something or do something that uh, uh, you think that uh, it's not good to do or uh, it's difficult or it takes much more energy or effort uh, I'm just asking this because I see a normal company where uh, you usually have the fight between uh, uh, the management and uh, the tech uh, guys. Uh, and, uh, so we, we are all here. We are all here as individuals. Uh, we try to do what's good for the project, and the, we, we assume that even if, in case I don't know, Torsten says something, and first it looks interesting idea. <laughs> yeah. So Michal is the one. Now, so somebody says something which sounds all that first. You can always assume that that person wants to do something good for the project. You just don't understand the background. And then we can have this course and we can have discussion. And so far it was almost like this. Perhaps when we, we had that debate in case when, when the LibreOffice major version should be incremented to four. You can imagine how long that ago was that. Perhaps that was a case where there was an actual vote, so, but it, it's really rare. So we, we like to work by building consensus instead. Any other questions? It was not really private. I think it happened at um, the Berlin conference in 2013, perhaps, something like that. And uh, like probably, I don't know, I was not a formal member of ESC then, I was just listening and I think like you had to put up your hand or something and like LibreOffice 4 did happen. So. <laughs> <laughs> So, so broadly, um, the, the EC tends not to care that much about those kind of details to, to, to the point where they, they, they care so very little um, that uh, other parts of the projects would be like, although kind of looking for leadership at the ESC, um, then are uh, kind of left to their own devices. So, so, so there might have been one of those reasons where to put legitimacy to that decision and to put, give some weight to that, that there was a vote on something that pretty probably people broadly agreed on anyway. And just just to say, well, then this is the end of the discussion. We have voted. And and beyond that, of course, um, totally to to back that up. That it's been an absolutely pleasant uh, experience um, with the ESC, um, and um, I mean broadly with the uh, with the uh, let's say code hacking, engineering, QA-ish, technical side of the project all the time.
So nominally, we use all the time. <laughs> uh, or is that 30 minutes? No, 30 minutes. 30 minutes. The next, Good. The next presentation is a video sometimes. Okay. Even uh, that. So uh, I said the trick is to convince everyone that we only have 20 minutes, no more questions, because once you say no more questions, there are at least two. Okay. Um, well, we don't have, do we have cloth here? No. No, that's a shame. Well, I thought we could use, maybe we could use the um, this, uh, getting together, but we don't need to do that now. Maybe that's something we can discuss over the next uh, three days. Um, whether the, the current um, processes and tools and tool chains um, and ways that we, we, we do our work um, on the on the technical side of the project, whether everyone is happy with that or whether there are some, some pain points that perhaps uh, the EC could start collecting, um, ideally maybe even propose solutions to that. Um, the reason for that, um, just not, not to, to hide that, that I've been, um, for a number of years, there has been some, some occasional grumblings that this or that is not like smooth or CI, like I have to wait two days for a build, things like that, or we have too, too many tests or we have too little tests. Um, and I think it's great to do that, um, like while we sit together in person, rather than in, in this rather limited one hour slot, and then you got only 10 minutes to discuss any topic at all. I'm not saying GitLab here. GitLab has, has a number of things to provide from code review to issue tracking and so on. Um, I guess uh, for the Bugzilla, um, switching away from that has the problem that they have heavily invested. Well, not heavily, but did invest uh, some time to make that customized in a way uh, so that it fits our needs. Um, Cisco, do you want to comment on that? Do you love Bugzilla or? How do you see that? Obviously, you are aware of other bug trackers which allow editing commands and whatnot, but uh, then miss out on many other things. <clears throat> so, yeah, Baxilla, I'm used to it, so it works for me. Uh, one thing that users complain about it is that, for example, you cannot edit a, an existing comment, comment that you have already in Baxilla, which could be really helpful. And on the other side, uh, as you said, TDF invested in in Baxilla. They recently released a new minor version, and they are already working and should be almost done. Uh, Baxilla six, which has many improvements, so hopefully it's released soon. And yeah, like probably we're gonna see some improvements, like the one I mentioned. I think it's implemented in Baxilla six. Yeah. So to mark down, uh, mark down some questions for the next uh, planning. I don't know. I, I haven't. I haven't followed the development of Axilla, so I'm not. I don't really know. Il Marie, he knows a lot, and he has been following it. So I don't know if is connected online or like to this? No, probably not. And of course, Bugzilla is just one part. Uh, we also have Garrett and Jenkins and what, what else do you have in mind when we uh, talk about this? These things or oh, are there other big areas I'm missing out? Years of, oh, I never mentioned it, but I really don't like this or that. And it's also 
See, w one small part thing, just to mention that, um, that uh, um, I don't really like is um, we have this trade-off with the Android builds that uh, we have four Android platforms and two of them are randomly selected when you submit a change. And I understand the reasons for that um, because it's always a trade-off uh, how many, how much testing you do before the change goes in. But then that's not really um, uh, predictable. So in some corner cases you can have this that um, you get a failure, you can't really reproduce that. Um, of course, that's again not ideal. So ideally you should be able to, in, in my view, you should be able to locally. Whatever. So there is a way to force all the four builds for your Garrett change or for the patch set that you send in. I'm not sure how it was implemented in the end, but there is a way to, to get that so that you get all of them. Yeah, something like that, some obscure Jenkins Garrett feature. Okay, so I can take the action item to talk to Cloth, get the info, get the document it somewhere where I would find and probably then it would be somewhat possible to find for others as well. So like just making sure that uh, that builds are as consistent as possible across uh, different patch sets of the same change. That's uh, I think a uh, great help for all of us. Cisco has some additional comments there. I just wanted to mention something that I think it was Michael Stahl who mentioned it recently in ISC that maybe we should consider to um, or evaluate um, to have timeouts for test. So basically, if they run for longer than half a minute, then the bill fails in CI. So at least we, like, there was some tests that were like took ten minutes to to run, and unless you look at the logs, you 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 never know that this is happening. So maybe having in, having this in in CI could be helpful. Any other suggestion, Pat? Pat, uh, small problems. I suppose talking about small problems, I think it's the default that um, if you cherry pick a um, patch between branches, the reviewers get CC'd on that of the original one. And I know there is some kind of, again, slightly obscure way of pushing your commit to avoid that. But I'm trying to think, in what circumstances do you want the person to be CC'd? I feel in my case, 90% of the time, I don't want the original reviewer to be CC'd. So the defaults are the wrong way around. And I don't know if those defaults are accessible to us or not to tweak it the other way around but if it could that'd be really great um, to change the defaults the other way around and it, talking earlier about like say github and gitlab what's available there every now and then you might come across something on, on github there and like a third party service is available and they're available as you know github um i can't remember terminology they knew you use but basically basically services that are accessible if you use a github interface to things extra travis ci like S390 bills are available if you integrate on, on GitHub and other things like that. They're kind of maybe obscure, maybe useful, but you can't experiment with them because um, they are only kind of GitHub only things. But we do have a mirror on GitHub. So I guess the other question is, is it at least theoretically possible to use some of those GitHub services via our GitHub um, mirror? I imagine it is, but I don't know. because uh, it's usually just a uh, uh, mirror on the commits and then you have to write the rules on the other side and if you want to measure the feedback, uh, you have to write something like this. Not impossible, but I don't know in such stuff uh, so big like uh, mm, the foundation and uh, all the stuff. Uh, so, mm, just as part of brainstorming, for example, um, there could be a code coverage metric and then in case that's run regularly then you can build some we can see if we go uphill or downhill on that and if that's um, a half an hour hack with uh, with some github infrastructure then that um, that's a bit easier compared to just building that on your own but of course like 
there are many other values um, on, on running our own Git uh, Garrett uh, instance, like um, the default Git eyes uh, browser would be less friendly towards our needs. And I know that um, Ilham has a patch set that he's rebasing for all of these releases, just because we were asking for those things. Um, so that's, that's again a bit of a trade-off, how much customization you do versus you just stick to the um, possibility which is um, available out of the box. To come back to this, uh, when is it interesting for the original author to get notified about a, uh, um, a cherry pick? Um, I think the only time it's interesting is when uh, Cisco does uh, backporting uh, of something that doesn't need to be backported because Cisco thankfully looks apparently looks at all the commits and decides on some heuristic if it should be backported, which is great. And sometimes it's just not useful and then, and then I ping you that uh, you can ignore that one. And uh, But all the other times, especially if it is for uh, some feature or some distro branches, then I think it's never really useful to be informed about it. I think that much is the, the original uh, Garrett uh, default. Uh, so my understanding is that um, um, this was added for Android needs, and there the trouble was that there is the original developer developing or mastered some of these tasks to cherry pick all the bug fixes, security fixes, whatnot, to the stable branch. And then um, this way, as an original developer, you have a chance to say that this is not meant to be there, which is basically matching what you say. Um, just probably in their case, um, the not relevant cherry picking is happening to other repos, and then you don't get the noise. Yeah, um, probably um, for the majority of the cases, this uh, this is just noise for us. Now we use all the time. Uh, sorry, this time I did not take uh, notes. Normally, this is exactly uh, what I do. I try to take some some notes on what we are discussing. Um, um, it's possible that we can uh, next week we can uh, put together a summary of just just um, what are things that are painful for people, so that this is not completely forgotten. Otherwise, we use the time. Uh, thanks for coming here, and like for any um, any of the yes members stand, standing here um, uh, or sitting here, uh, feel free to grab us during the conference and in case um, you have some suggestion or question then we will try to do our best. Thanks. <laughs>